How many of you remember the movie, The Passion? It was shown in one of the local prisons and when one of the inmates saw the movie, he was so convicted that he knew that if he confessed to what he'd done, that he was gonna be in more trouble than he was where he was at. But he said he could not, not confess. The movie had so moved him, what Jesus had done for him, that he went to the authorities and he confessed to a crime that was probably gonna get him to spend the rest of his life in prison. But he said it didn't matter. The truth was all that mattered. Welcome. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us today. We pray that you are blessed by the music and the ministry of the service you are about to participate in. We are so glad that you have chosen to be here and we pray that you are blessed. Now, if this is your first time, we ask that you let us know where you're watching from because we have people in so many different countries. And if this message touches you, if there's something that blesses you, please leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, a heart. We just love it when you show your praise for what God is ministering to you. It's not for us, this is all about Him. So we want you to be a participant, not just an observer in this service with us today. And if there's some way that you need to contact us, if you have a question, if you need prayer, if you need a Bible, our information will be at the end of the video where you can reach out to us, you can call us, you can message us through Facebook. There's so many different ways, but mainly you can visit our central hub at godspeakministry.com and all of the information is there. And if you want to continue your worship through giving, which is always goes to God, then we invite you to do that also through our central hub, godspeedministry.com. Now, let's get into why you came into the message. Let's go ahead and start off with prayer, and we'll go ahead and get started. Our Lord and precious Heavenly Father, as the words flow from my lips, may they be words of reassurance, of words of encouragement, words of compelling us to do a better job of what you have called us to do, and you share with us how to do it in the Word of God. Be with us today, Lord, as we go about the task and the racing that we do today, Lord. Cover those that are suffering. Be with those that are mourning. Be with those that are joyous. Be with those that are looking at things that are difficult to handle. Lord, we just pray for your peace, your power, and your presence. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome to Godspeed Ministry. This is, a, again, this is a fourth in a series of five. It is a non-denominational service. And what I'd like to do is to start off by reading you each of the topics, and then we'll go into detail as to each of the topics one by one. And the, the picturing a special future. The number one topic is what kind of future do our words picture? Picturing a special future in patriarchal, patriarchal homes. Bringing out the best in those we bless. The power of past consistency. The power of present commitment. Let's go ahead and go back and we'll look through each one of these topics. What kind of future do our words picture for our kids? Now this illustration is in the book. It says, how can anyone as dumb and ugly as you have such a great looking child. Now, this mother had been doing this all of her life to her kids. She did not realize what a negative picture that she was producing for her kids. And her son decided that it was time that somebody said something. So he, uh, he says, Mom, don't ever call me dumb and ugly again. It's taken me years to realize that I'm not dumb and I am not ugly. 
and the mother did not realize because she had been treated the same way as a child. So she didn't see the difference or that it was impacting her kids in a negative way. It brought tears and sorrow to her heart because she'd been doing that all of their lives and their kids had been affected by it as much, so much so that it determined how they lived their lives. Okay. Number two, picturing a special future in the patriarch's home. And we'll go back to what we've been doing through Genesis 27, 28 and 29. Isaac spoke to Jacob. Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be masters over your brothers and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be ev everyone who curses you and blessed be those who bless you. The picture gives him the security of knowing he had something to look forward to. Jacob's son, Judiah, received a similar picture of his future in Genesis 49, 8. Judiah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. These patriotic words had a prophetic nature that is not part of the blessing that you and I give out today. So, be, so we have to understand that they had a knowledge of their kids' future somewhat that we don't. Now, we can look at our kids and we can see where they excel at. And when we can see those things, we can work and see and work with them to achieve those things that we see. There was a mother that introduced her two sons. She said, this is my lawyer and this is my doctor. Now, how did she know that these two were going to be lawyers and doctors? Well, either they just did it because their mother said so or maybe there was something that she saw in each one of those kids that she saw that that's what they would be good at so she saw a future for her kids in those areas of their life so she almost projected what their future would be by how she introduced them we introduce our kids and we can have ways that we also can see where they are. Some of these kids that I look out here are gonna make awesome race car drivers. I mean, I do not want to come up against some of these kids at the start line. When I see zero, zero sixes, zero, zero twos coming up in a reaction time, they don't have trans brakes. They don't have computers. They don't have any of those things that assist them in getting those kind of lights. So when they get up into that class, they're gonna be hard to beat. So those are the ways that we can assist them in becoming what they should be, okay? Our next one is, by giving our kids a specific uh, future, we actually are giving them security. We're giving them a sense of family, a sense of belonging, a part of achieving a goal or a career in their lives. Bring out the best in those that we love, okay? The prophet Jeremiah assures us of the special future that we have, we have with God. In Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, and the key word is no. It doesn't say maybe, could be, should be, would be. It says no, circle it, highlight it, Put, question, uh, put quotation marks around it. No is definite. It is a definite word. It's not a, a word that is negative. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. And Jesus reiterated this in John 14, 2 and 3. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, 
I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So that's our guarantee that Jesus has come into the world to give us these things. Uh, in my personal relationship, I know that something's wrong when I lose my peace. And I know that something needs to be changed. Something needs to be corrected. I need to go back and find out where was that spot that I lost that peace and I can regain it. And most of the time I find it's when I have lost the closeness with Jesus Christ, which is when I lose my peace. It means that I get caught up in the drama or in the biggest cases, um, one of my pet peeves is, is road rage on the highway. I just have a struggle when people do stupid things and and God has to remind me, you don't know what they're going through today. So you cannot judge them based upon what they're doing at the moment. They may have distracted. They may be having something going on in their life. You don't know what they're dealing with, so you can't project that onto them. But it's real easy to do it. The power of past consistency. Uh, I think last time I mentioned a, an old song that's uh, Cats in the Cradle. Uh, some of the older ones will probably remember this song. It's a song of a dad who gets so busy in life that he doesn't have time for his son. He keeps making promises to his son that whenever he has time that he'll play ball with him or he'll do this or he'll do that. And the problem is he never seems to have time to do that. And so in the end, whenever the dad has time, now the son doesn't have time. So he calls his son up and said, hey son, let's get together. He said, sorry, Dad. I says, uh, my kids are sick, and I got this new job, and it's giving me a lot of trouble, but we'll have fun then, Dad. We'll have fun then. So the dad hangs up, and he says, you know what? He is just like me. Cat's in the cradle. Cat's in the moon. He came back to him. He projected that onto his son, and his son took it on himself. Unless our words of a special future are backed up by a consistent track record, then it's going to be hard for our kids to actually believe what we tell them. Uh, it doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. I promise you there's not, there's only one person that didn't make any mistakes and uh, he didn't have any kids, but he had lots of adopted kids. So that's not that we can't make changes and they, that we can't change our past. Uh, I don't know about most of you guys here, but when I was in my teen, uh, I was a speedaholic. Uh, uh, I wasn't in serious trouble, but I was always, always looking in my rear view mirror because I knew either this block or the next block or today or tomorrow, the local police were going to catch up to me and they were going to confront me with some stupid thing that I had done. So I was constantly looking at my rearview mirror. Now when I'm driving down the highway and I'm pulling my trailer, I still have a tendency to look out my rearview mirror, not my side mirrors, but my rear view mirror. And I'm, every time I look, there's something blocking my view. Guess what it is? It's that trailer. But guess what that trailer resembles? Resembles. It's my past. That is blocking me from the future. Guess where the future is? It's outside your windshield. It's the area that's three, four, five times greater than that little rearview mirror that we constantly are looking in over our shoulder to see the past. Is it gonna catch up to me? Or is I gonna get caught? Uh, how many of you remember the movie, The Passion? It was someone back and it was shown in one of the local prisons and when one of the inmates saw the movie, he was so convicted that he knew that if he confessed to what he had done, that he was gonna be in more trouble than he was where he was at. But he said he could not, not confess. The movie had so moved him, what Jesus had done for him, that he went to the authorities and he confessed to a crime that was probably gonna get him 
to spend the rest of his life in prison. If not, he was going to be put on death row. But he said it didn't matter. The truth was all that mattered. He wanted to correct his past so he could go into the future with a clean slate. And so he made sure that his past lived up or his future was cleared up by his past. Psalms 105.5, remember his, more, uh, his marvelous works, which he has done, his wonders and the judgment of his mouth. Psalms 33.9, he spoke and it was done. He commandeth and it stood fast. There's an old, there's a country, or not country, there's a Christian song that says, how did he know how far for the water to come in? that the water would not go any further than the shoreline. Now we know of hurricanes and, and tropical storms that that does not apply to, but on a normal, the seashore stays the seashore. It doesn't engulf all of the land. It knows where to stop because he's reliable because he set that in motion and it stays exactly where he put it. God has been reliable in our past. His words of a special future for us in the present have cadence we can depend on it our credibility in the past or lack of it will directly affect how our words are received in the present the power of the present commitment that's today that's right here and right now one of the greatest things that we can do uh, one young lady came home from school they've been in school about two months and they're sitting at the dinner table, and she's looking a little, uh, little puzzled, a little sad. And she asked her, Mom, are you going to divorce Dad? And the mother's puzzled by this question coming out of the blue. And she said, she thought about it. She said, well, no, honey, I'm not going to divorce your husband. And she thought, she says, you know, I may murder him, but I'm not going to divorce him. So in essence, she lightened up the situation, but she guaranteed her daughter that she could be secure. The reason for the question was... Two months into the new school year, two of her friends' families were already getting a divorce. Her question was, am I secure? Is my family safe? Am I safe? Am I secure in that environment? The greatest threat that we have to security of our children is divorce. Some of you have already experienced that. Some of your children have already experienced that. I know that there's parents here who take their, make sure that they spend time with their kids regardless of what the circumstance is with their ex-spouse. When I was divorced from my, uh, my wife, I made sure that I had a job in the afternoon. I went by and I picked up my son and his cousin who lived three houses apart and I picked them up for school every day to make sure he understood, I'm not going anywhere. His mother and I couldn't make it, but I'm not going to divorce you. You will need to have that security, and you will need to have that backing in your life. So I made sure that I stayed where I was at. I could have taken a better job and moved away, but if I moved away, I lose contact with him. And we know what happens when you move away. It gets harder and harder and harder to get that time with your kids so they feel left. How many of you uh, remember the movie I Can Only Imagine? Okay. Well, in that story, his mother leaves because her new husband has a job in San Antonio. And he's devastated because now he is alone. That sense of security is gone. And it haunted him for years and years and years until he actually went and did some therapy with a Christian counselor to deal with these issues, to find out what was at the bottom of it. And it was his loss of security that his home was a safe place because it wasn't safe. His dad was a monster. His dad abused him. Dad beat him, left him so bad that he couldn't even, he had to lay on his stomach because his back was so bruised from the beating that he could not lay on it. And he suffered from that for years. 
So we have an opportunity. You guys show it here. And I know there's step parents here that have taken on somebody else's kids as they're your own. And you are stand up people. Because that is the ultimate sacrifice to be there for somebody else's kids, to make them your kids. You do that with your own and you do that with theirs. So kudos to each of you for standing up and being the man, whether it's a father figure in the home or just a male person to live out your life in front of them. So as we do these things, we are giving them a secure place and a secure future where they can thrive. Because otherwise, I'll, I've got one more story and I'll, and I'll share that and we'll close. In a prison in Arkansas, Bill Glass was speaking on this very subject. The blessing, <coughs> excuse me. And he asked the men in that auditorium, how many of you have ever been told that you're worthless, you're nobody, and you're gonna wind up in prison? 75% of the men in that room raised their hand and said somebody significant in their life told them they were worthless. As a kid, the most vulnerable years of their life when they don't have the capacity to make those decisions that they can reject those statements. They take it as truth because it came from somebody in their life that should have been speaking truth into their life. Instead, they were speaking lies and negativity. And they followed and wound up in that position. With that being said, kudos to every man and woman here who has stepped up to take the role of mothers and fathers for kids and for others. Whether you've adopted them, whether you foster them, whether you uh, just neighbor kids that come over to your house because they know you're safe. It's a safe place to be. It's a fun place to be. And thank you for doing that. And let's close in prayer. Our Lord and precious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word that gives us an example how we should be the parent to step up to be that for our kids, to guarantee their future, that they have security and safety and they have a future to look forward to. Jesus gave us that future when he died on the cross for our sins, that we would have a future home in heaven. So thank you for that gift of eternal life. And Lord, we ask you to be with each person here today. This is Labor Day. We're celebrating the holidays here at the racetrack. So God, we ask you to keep us safe, keep us moral, and keep us safe and secure. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We pray you were blessed by today's message. We have some amazing people who are willing to go to the four corners of this nation to tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if something in the message today, in the service of the music or whatever you saw or heard, touched you, and you want to reach out to us, please do so. Our information will be here. You can reach out to the ministry at 704-473-4212. Or you can get all of our information at godspeedministry.com. We want you to know God personally, powerfully, and passionately because we are preparing to become his bride when he returns for us or when we leave this earth. So we want to make sure that you have that relationship with him. That's our main priority. It's not just to give you a head knowledge but a heart knowledge to be adopted by the King of the universe and the Lord of Lords and to have all your sins washed away so that you walk in victory in this world. Godspeed Ministry exists to connect people to God and then to each other in service to bring other people who are hurting, lost, worried, confused, and afraid into the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ 
And if that's you, make sure that you reach out to us. You can reach out to us in the comments, in Messenger, and again at GodFeedMinistry.com. We look forward to hearing from you. And if this message was a blessing to you and you are already walking with God and this just fired you up to walk even closer with Him, leave us a heart and let us know. And we'll see you in heaven. Godspeed.